The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse Most people have heard of these dark figures in Bible prophecy, but few really know what they are and what they mean. Are they real, literal men on horses that will terrorize men in the end times? Are they demons? Or are they just figurative pictures of evil events that take place on the earth? Let's examine what the Bible says about these four horsemen and what their coming will signify. We find them mentioned in only one passage of Scripture, Revelation chapter 6. In chapter 5, a great scroll is seen in heaven that is sealed with seven seals. At first, no one is found worthy to open the seals of this scroll and read what is written within. But then, the one and only worthy one is found, the Lamb of God. This Lamb, a clear picture of Jesus, then proceeds to open each seal of this mysterious book, one by one. And with each of these first six seals comes a devastating judgment upon the earth. Of these six judgments, the first four are each pictured by different riders on different colored horses. These are the opening judgments of the period of time known as the Tribulation. They are the four horsemen of the Apocalypse. In Revelation 6 verse 2, when the Lamb is seen opening the first of the seven seals, John writes, And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering, and to conquer. Now check out my video on the Antichrist in Scripture to learn more about this. It seems that this horse actually represents that man of sin that is spoken of in Daniel as an evil prince who will make a seven-year peace treaty with many people and will rise to power by his great speech and by supplanting the rule of three other kings. His rise to power marks the beginning of the seven years of judgment that God has prepared for the earth. Following this conqueror, the second seal was then opened from the great scroll, and John saw a second rider, this one mounted on a red horse. Scripture tells us that power was given to him that sat on this horse to take peace from the earth, that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. Interestingly enough, the first rider on the white horse came for the purpose of conquering, but he had no sword and apparently brought peace. But the second rider on the red horse comes with a sword to take peace away from the earth. No matter how the Antichrist may promise peace, men will rise against men and peace will not be found. It will be taken away from the earth. It seems that the peace treaty of the Antichrist will not work, and that's probably by design. The Antichrist will probably want to consolidate power by making war with those who do not join him in the treaty. Needless to say, with peace completely gone from the entire world, things will probably get very bad very quickly for those alive during this time. And there will be no respite from these troubles because the Lamb continues to open the seals and after opening the third seal, there comes another rider, this one on a black horse. This rider is given a command that he is to fulfill on the earth. A measure of wheat is to be sold for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Now the penny spoken of here was a Roman coin called the denarius, which was equal to the wages for an average day of labor, or at least that's what the Roman army paid their soldiers. However, the word measure here refers to an amount less than a quart and is basically equivalent to what one man would generally eat in a day. What this seems to be saying here is that food is going to be extremely expensive. It will take an entire day's work to provide just enough food for yourself to eat for that day. What will people do on the weekends? What if they have kids? How will they pay for other necessities? The world will begin to spiral into poverty probably as a direct result of that war that will be waged across the globe. Notice in verse 5 that the rider has in his hands a pair of balances for measuring, and at the end of verse 6 he is told, 
see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. This reinforces the idea that there will be serious rationing taking place on the earth during this time. The people are weighing things carefully and are gingerly handling their wine and oil. Those of us who have experienced the toilet paper rationing that took place in many stores in 2020 have a sense of what this may be like on a much smaller scale. This horse tells us that there will be skyrocketing prices for food and rationing taking place as scarcity grows, probably in response to the war. But the lamb isn't done yet. He still has several seals left to open, and as he opens the fourth seal, there came a fourth and final rider. This one was riding on a pale horse, and judging by the Greek word that John used to describe it, it was probably pale green in color. This rider is different from the others, for this rider has a name. His name is Death, and Hell follows him. Death here is given power over one-fourth of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with beasts of the earth. This horseman seems to suggest to us that all of the previous three horsemen were sent to the earth in immediate succession, almost simultaneously, because death, the fourth horseman, claims many people by the sword or by battle. This seems to refer to the war that was brought by horseman number two. And death also claims those who die of hunger, seeming to refer to the famine and rationing brought by horseman number three. But people are also killed during this time by wild animal attacks, by beasts of the earth. What's even more interesting to note is that one-fourth of the earth is stricken by this coming of death, and he is followed by hell. Now, some have theorized that this refers to one whole fourth part of the world, like North America, that rises up and resists the Antichrist and is completely exterminated by war as the Antichrist retaliates against them, by famine as their food grows scarce, and by beasts of the earth. That's possible, but I also think that the war will claim lives on both sides, and I think this is probably speaking about one-fourth of all the people on the earth not just one-fourth of the land area of the earth. But either way, one-fourth of the earth or one-fourth of people being given to death is a lot of people who will die during these events. And what's worse is that the Bible tells us that these deaths are followed by hell, meaning these people who are dying in this judgment seem to be unsaved. And sadly, they end up receiving justice for their sins eternity in hell. So what are these riders? Are they angels? Are they demons? Or are they just figurative representations of the events that will happen? Well, I think that we can safely say that they definitely are figurative and they represent events that will take place on the earth. However, could they also be real beings as well as being pictures of what takes place? Could they be angels whom God is sending to carry out these judgments on the earth? I guess that's possible, but it doesn't seem likely. God does send angels to accomplish many of the other judgments that he brings upon the earth, but if these horsemen were angels sent to work behind the scenes in the world to accomplish these judgments, why is the first one so obviously figurative of the Antichrist? I mean, he's not really the Antichrist because the Antichrist is a man and then horseman number four is called death. In Revelation 20, death and hell are cast into the lake of fire. And 1 Corinthians 15, 26 tells us that death is the last enemy that Jesus will conquer when he comes to rule and reign. So death, if it's the enemy of Jesus, isn't an angel or a servant of God. That's why I think these horsemen are just figurative pictures and not in any way literal. I mean, I guess the spirit of the Antichrist might be riding horse number one, and demons ride horses numbers two through four, who go out to accomplish these things on the earth. I suppose that's possible, but all we actually know for sure is that they are figurative representations of the first four judgments that God will bring upon the earth during these last seven years. What do you think? 
I know a lot of people have differing views on this topic, and you know by now that I'm not afraid of having a conversation with people who disagree with me. Let me know what you think and why in the comments below. Now, before I go, I want to sincerely thank you for watching this video. If you like this content, don't forget to hit subscribe to support the channel and to see more content like this. And follow The Bible Explained on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash The Bible Explained. I really appreciate the support. Also, I want to remind you that the entire Bible is ultimately about one thing, the redemption of mankind by Jesus Christ. You see, the Bible tells us that all men are sinners and that we must pay for our sin against God for eternity in hell. That's definitely the bad news. But you see, the Bible is all about this one thing, the good news that Christ died to pay the penalty for our sin on the cross. Since your sin has been paid for by Christ, all that is left for you to do is to turn from your sin and accept his salvation by faith. If you've never accepted this gift of God by faith, won't you do that today? Leave a comment or send me a private message on Facebook and I'll be happy to talk to you more about having your sins forgiven by Jesus Christ.